It's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure, Phil. So, uh, well, first of all, I want you to describe your overview of professionals to do the toolkit in Thailand, especially the overview of Baker Tilly in Thailand, please. Yes, of course. They're delighted to. Uh, um, we're a global accounting firm, and our Thai firm is an important part of our APAC group of firms who have just gone over one billion US dollars in terms of part of our global revenue, which is now 4.7 billion. Yeah. And they're a firm that offers everything you'd expect an accounting firm to offer. <clears throat> audit, tax, advisory, and they have just begun to start working in the legal field as well. So it's a holistic service, lots of things that they're able to help clients with. Mm, and right. our whole operation is about helping clients wherever they are in the world to achieve the best possible outcomes. Yes. How long have you been established in Thailand for Baker Tilly, please? Uh, I've just, I'm here on a very short trip to Thailand. Yes. So I'm only here for a couple of days, but I've been spending time with my colleagues. Uh, uh, we've had a managing partner meeting. So we've been here for two full days of meetings so far. Mm -hmm. And we're covering all sorts of different areas. After the big meeting, how do you file in Thailand? How is your point of view about professionals, uh, economics, or whatever we talk about that? the overview of the Thailand in your perception? Yes, it's, it's been fascinating because it's been a few years since I've been back in Thailand because of COVID and um, the business situation that uh, prevented us all from traveling. All right. But it's been fascinating to see how Thailand has grown. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm intrigued to see that uh, as I went out for dinner and went on the street, of Bangkok, how many people uh, are actually back from all over the world. Mm -hmm. So you can see a real influx of both tourists and also businesses. And I'm sure for the last couple of years, there's been some very difficult uh, moments for many, many businesses. But I get a sense of cautious optimism about the fact that that work is coming back and beginning to see, for example, China returning right. into traveling to places like Thailand mm. now that their strict border controls have relaxed. Mm -hmm. But for this uh, situation after we uh, faced with uh, COVID-19, so that means uh, all, all the other national countries that after COVID-19, what you think is that uh, the, the, the growth of the economies in the nations is a uh, growing rapidly or still got the something that we talk about the United State, especially we talk about recession of the economy. What do you think about in Asia region or Southeast Asia region? Yes, I think there's sort of uh, huge signs for optimism in this part of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been great growth in many businesses. Our businesses done double digit growth very successfully in the last year as clients want to do more. They, they perhaps put off some transactions over the last few years because of the economic conditions mm -hmm. and now are keen to start doing things again. Mm -hmm. And also if I compare Asia with Europe where perhaps it's more cautiously pessimistic mm -hmm. and there's rising inflation and rising interest rates yes. and a massive cost of living issue, that there is a buzz around this part of the world that mm -hmm. gives you a sense that there's some very good years ahead. Mm -hmm. Paul, from your part of view, what we talk about the uh, economies and uh, governance in the recently is being established like uh, what we talk about geopolitics it's very clearly that the world is what divided to to pass or you, what do you think about it oh sorry i didn't quite catch that could you give me that again yes, I love my, about what we talk about uh, another side for with another side take side by last year uh, china or asia is another side is lead by United States or Europe and they get a lot of competitiveness and nowadays they have a uh, last year in Ukraine war and another supporter with another supporter it's just like face to face is it is it cruel about that what do you think yes I think I think things are really um, last year was a particularly difficult year I think for mm. for many parts of the world in terms of uh, some of the economic conditions that were still flowing out mm -hmm. uh, if you look at Europe of course the Ukraine war had a, has had and is still having yeah. a massive massive ripple effect it's impacting on 
uh, supply chains, uh, on the cost of energy, and, and many other things besides, apart from the humanitarian mm-hmm. um, tragedy that's taking place there. Um, so if I, if I compare and contrast with perhaps some of the things that you're seeing in, in the Asian market, mm-hmm. I, I get the sense from talking to your leaders, uh, speaking to my colleagues, All right. that that whole concept of free trade is beginning to become uh, more popular again. All There's right. so much work done about making this a free trade area, and perhaps some of that uh, w- wasn't possible to deliver on during the COVID years. And a real sense now of a desire to go back to that, to be more about cooperation rather mm-hmm. than about competition. And that's something that I think is very attractive for businesses. They like stability. They don't like volatility. And it's been a very volatile mm-hmm, right. few years. So I think that there's real hope there. With the word that you say is about free trade area, How important are free trade areas and how ASEAN will gain on this free trade area? What do you think? I think it's hugely important. There's there's something incredibly valuable about like-minded countries who mm-hmm. are geographically connected but very business connected. Finding ways to work more effectively together. It's it's not unlike what we do in our own network. We have uh, lots of funds around the world, but collaboration mm-hmm. is key to how we can successfully work right. well mm-hmm. with our clients. And I think the free trade opportunity in the ASEAN region is is hugely important to the success of this part of the world. It's just like not only uh, by by uh, bilingual of the country just like free trade area with another country or the free trade area with another group let's say the southeast asia we have free trade areas with the state or with china or with europe and some kind of that we have to get it like a uh, more effectiveness something like that right that's right i think there is about something about It's easy to talk about free trade. It's much more difficult to make sure that it's executed on and mm-hmm. done. And it is sometimes about giving something up to enable you to get more back. Mm-hmm. So I think for free trade areas to really work, you need commitment from governments and from business leaders to make it come alive. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, it remains as something that looks great on a piece of paper. Mm, But right. it's really about having the right rules, the right approaches, and a real commitment. To make sure that trade's made easier rather than it's made difficult by a lot of very complicated red tape. How do we how 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 do we make it alive? Just like just not say that the word alive it it sounds easy, but it's actually it's very difficult. Let's say we have three passes of the of the partnership like governance, like uh, privacy, and like a uh, customer. So we have to get it alive. In your point of view, how to get it alive? Yes, I think there is something about alignment there that's hugely important. If I look at other parts of the world that have uh, a free trade types of arrangements, it is about making it simple. It's about taking away the barriers to right, trade right. and making it much easier to move goods around, to move mm-hmm. service around, for people to work in different parts of the world. Uh, and that that requires a, a massive commitment. It mm-hmm. requires a real desire to make it work, mm-hmm. um, as opposed right. to talk about it. So I, I think that's that's going to be the most. It's about action. It's mm-hmm. about walking the talk. All right. So what are the challenges that the corporations face this nowadays? There's so many things for businesses and for corporations. Uh, right. I think it ranges from. Economic and political stability mm-hmm. has been very variable in mm-hmm. different parts of the world. Uh, big challenges around new rules and new regulations that mm-hmm. always causes a need for businesses to make sure that they're compliant and doing the right things. Mm-hmm. And then I think there's a whole new range of approaches that have come in post the pandemic. Right. Um, how do you deal with the people? How do you how do you do hybrid working or different mm-hmm. ways of working? How do you attract talent to your business? Many. Corporations tell me that they've mm-hmm. got a talent shortage. Right. Mm-hmm. They're trying to get more people into their business, and they need to change what they do mm-hmm. to be a more attractive employer. So there are many, many challenges, but also there's a huge number of opportunities. Uh, you've got an ability for a business to do extremely well if it actually has a very real clarity around what it's trying to achieve, around its purpose, around its vision. And also around its obviously mm-hmm. its customer service right. is it really delivering and its customer offering that we have to talk about uh, to 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 gain more professional for the star for the corporation for the colleague as well as long as we have to follow the economic news and everything that we can 
get along by the the track. But what what what's about that? The difference between way thinking and Asia Asia thinking that it, how cooperative should prepare themselves to be competitive. Yes, I mean, I, mean I, I, I certainly don't need to give lessons to to the Asia region on being competitive because such a fantastic mm -hmm. uh, last few years of successful trade, thoughtful consumer offerings, uh, and a really impressive uh, range of growth in this part of the world. But mm -hmm. I think there's a, a as as everybody's beginning to get a little bit more global again. Mm -hmm. I think we all got quite narrow during the pandemic, but we're beginning to think more globally again. Mm -hmm. There is amazing opportunities uh, to work with people who really want to have uh, want to work across different borders. They mm -hmm. want to be able to provide a consistency of service. They want to be able to operate in different parts of the world. Some businesses are born global. Some businesses become multinational as time goes mm -hmm. on. Right. And I think there, there's a, a huge amount that corporations can embrace around really getting to understand the different areas they're looking to go into. Um, about managing their business in a really both efficient way, but mm. in a really thoughtful way yeah. about what what the world's challenges are becoming, and also about making sure that they're living up to some of the new uh, pieces that are vital for corporations, such mm -hmm. as ESG, a really important part of being a sustainable and effective business. Ah, we talk about sustainable, so now we talk about another thing that we always thinking of in Thailand for the corporation. Is ESG that you heard about it, and you, I know that you clearly about the ESG. What we what we have to do about ESG, and let's say the corporate governance values of that, how the corporate faring in this the growing sustainability of the ESG, please. Yes, I mean e ESG is everybody's favorite abbreviation, yes. and so and so it should be. Uh, it's hugely important that environmental social governance piece that all businesses mm -hmm. should be considering and um, some are hugely sophisticated in this area already so others are just looking at where they can make their first steps yes and, and, the, re and the reason it matters is is, is threefold really um, who wouldn't want to be making sure that their business mm -hmm. was sustainable in all the various ways that it should be how we, uh, that? How we accomplish that mission yeah, yeah so, so it's sustainable in terms of how it interacts with its environment, yeah. how it tr treats the, the world around it, how it interacts mm -hmm. with its community, what's its social impact in the, in the broader world. That it, none, of us, none of us operate as an island. How does, it, how does it work socially in its community? And also, does it have good governance? Mm. There are many very sad stories about corporations that haven't had good transparency, haven't operated mm -hmm. in an effective way, and that's detrimental to its business full stop, but also to the people that it has within it and also to its clients. So mm -hmm. it's a hugely important area, not easy, because yeah. there's so many different elements to yes. it. I mean, w one vital piece around it is, you know, where what do you actually need to do? Where's your plan? How are you going to um, manage the challenges of ESG? The, uh, in many parts of the world, regulations are coming in about reporting ESG, making sure that you've got proper controls and yes. verification, and you can prove that you're doing things in the ESG field. Uh, and I think many corporations want to make sure they're genuinely taking action mm. as opposed to greenwashing their business. So it looks as though they're doing things when perhaps they're not doing as much as they could. Yeah, that's mean that we, we're going to get something like carbon credit, something like a uh, greenhouse effect, something like good environment. That's that's gonna relate to all everything about this, right? Well, it's, yes, it's all about it's this really cohesive, holistic approach to mm. um, we only have one planet, making yes. sure that we treat it right and making sure we treat our communities well, so mm. businesses have such an impact on the communities they're in. I think a hugely important part of this is taking um, taking action uh, yes. before you're forced to take action. Mm -hmm. So thinking about what can we do to be more environmentally sound? What do we need to do to make sure we're getting closer to a net zero impact on the world around us? Yes. What actions um, are we already doing? Because many businesses will be doing things. What more do we need to do? And um, how do we bring that alive? So I think a, a lot of businesses are, yes. are looking incredibly closely mm -hmm. at what they're currently doing, what they need to do, and what the roadmap is to that. So come to the most important questions. How do uh, Baker Tilly and your professional 
to get the corporate in Thailand to lift up or what we think about it, lift up or increase or gain to accomplish that what we talk about all over 20 minutes for now. Uh, so, so how do we get the, the words? Yeah. <laughs> Could you help me? Could you help us? Could you help our oh, uh, I'll, I'll have a go. <laughs> uh, Well, I think there's, there's so many different elements to that, but I think mm -hmm. in terms of what Baker Till is trying to bring, um, if I pick up on uh, helping around trade, uh, one of our core focuses is to have um, a global reach. Mm -hmm. We're a very big organization. We're in 140 plus countries, but keep that local touch. It's hugely important that we understand the countries that we're in, that we really talk to people uh, about the challenges they're facing and then help provide sensible solutions, pragmatic solutions. So global reach, local understanding is something we talk about a lot. So how can we bring that uh, into the client relationships we have with mm -hmm. Thailand. Um, I think there's a huge piece around how you work with businesses yeah. to help them with the challenges and the things that they're going through. Uh, some things that uh, they just want some help, support, bounce ideas around. Uh, other things are quite determined, deliverables, be there in audit or tax or advisory. Mm. And certainly last but not least on the ESG side of things, we work with clients uh, yes. all the time around how we can help them live up to their ESG principles and ourselves be credible in that space. We know it's important that we're taking action as a global network to look at ESG ourselves so that we're walking the talk to. All right. Based on the Thai economics after we faced with uh, COVID-19, let's say that we have the th so many foreigners come to Thailand just as a tourist or just as a foreign direct investment. So after this, beginning of year until the end of this year you think that thailand gonna grow up and gonna jump up out of the what we talk about the the, the uh, middle income trap or gonna go for for better well very soon right well it's, i i can see that businesses really come back even yeah. in the last sort of year or so mm -hmm. right. and certainly in the tourism piece you only have to walk uh, around Bangkok to see just the sheer volume of tourists that back from all over the world. Mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier that, that I'd expect China to come back with force into the, into Thailand. Very uh, very good. The tourists there are really keen to come and visit this beautiful this beautiful country. Mm, so I'm sure you. you'll be seeing a lot more <laughs> Chinese tourists as well. Mm -hmm. So so hopefully we will get along together with Baker Tilly uh, as you are leader of the team. And we are running out of time for the two or three minutes. Last two or three minutes, could you please express some your 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 opinion or your thinking about for uh, our uh, staff or our corporate or our fan club of CEO Vision Plus, please? Yes, I'm delighted. I mean, for me, um, w w I, th I think we have an ability as an organization to really work well with clients who are going through a volatile scenario. So provide a little bit of a, a clarity around some of the rules, but also to provide some pragmatic solutions about how people can deal with what's been a very challenging time. Uh, for me, I think there's a, a massively important piece around making sure that you bring the knowledge of different parts of the world right. together. We all learn from each other. No one's got all the answers. So as a global organization, we try and make sure we take knowledge from wherever that knowledge is and then use it with our clients because we're always going to be better if we collaborate. All right. That's a good conversation. We take about 20 or 25 minutes. Hopefully next time we get a a chance to interview you again. Thank you very much, Miss Francisca Lacaber. Thank you. Thank it's you for your joining our Thank show. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye.